of Jesus might be made manifest. In other words, every time you look around, I'm suffering. I'm showing you how it feels to suffer. I'm showing you how to hang in there with Jesus. Jesus said, listen, if you hang in there with me, John, I got something for you. But if you don't suffer, you can't reign with me. Listen, always bearing about the Lord Jesus Christ in my body. In other words, everything I do, I'm doing it because I love God. And I'm trying to encourage y'all and show y'all it's all about God. Come on, next verse. For he which... For we which live are always delivered unto death. Come on, y'all ain't reading. Why, don't, why, don't, why, why, you, why you can't read it? Read it again. You are always delivered unto death for who's sake? That's abounding. You are a partaker of Christ's suffering. That's abounding. Oh, hallelujah. If Jesus hadn't died for us, uh, y'all know we'd be in a world of trouble. We'd be in a world. Do y'all know if I didn't obey God and suffer what I've gone through, y'all would be in a world of trouble? I'm going to show you that. Coming up at the end of this verse, he's going to show you. Listen, there are people standing around wanting to be saved. They're waiting to be saved. They are sick of what they're doing. What provoked you to come here? Because you felt like, I tried this one, it didn't work. I tried this one, didn't work. Let me go ahead and try this one. Everybody keep hollering, oh, hell, Brother John over there going to help you. I'm going to see. Standing on the verge of trying to get back to God. I'm going to show you the verse. We're going to read it in a minute. But you got to go through all of this so you can really understand it. You found the verse for me? It's in Galatians, if I'm not mistaken. He said, after you've done all to stand, stand there for. Come on, I'll find it. I know I'm quoting it right. Look up stand. Come on, all y'all. Learn how to use your Bible. We're going to find it. Told you, one of y'all. I don't know where it's at. Read it for me. Tell me what it say. After you've done all the stand, is there a scripture? What verse are you reading? Where are you reading that at? 14 what? Read the whole verse for me. That's what I want. Ain't that's what I said? Didn't I quote that like that? I thought I did. I came close. Something like that, huh? What, what was that? Let's go to Ephesians 6, 13. You got it? Everybody got it? Man, I'm sweating like a bull. I'm about to start using them towels like other preachers out the wild, I guess, huh? And the big towels, you know. Come on. Verse 13, he said, What? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that when you be able to withstand in the evil day, and have it been done all. And after you've done all to stand, do what? Stand. And after you've done all to stand, do what? Stand. After you perplex and don't know what else to do, what you gonna do? Stand. Just keep right on standing. Hallelujah. Stand, therefore, having your lungs girt about with what? Don't you start lying to get out of your predicament. Don't you start lying to get out of your situation. Don't you start conniving to fix your complaint. Listen, don't you start getting trickery to come up with something. Don't you start getting slick to try to solve your problem. You stand there for 
which you'll learn gird about. In other words, I'm going to hold up my dignity by being honest. Hallelujah. Mr. Portis, what did you do? Why did you lose the house? Because I worked for God. Well, don't he pay you when he feel like it? Don't you think he, he say you ought to pay? Yes, I think he ought to pay, but he told me I couldn't pay. Hallelujah. He said he was going to take care of it. But don't you know you're going to lose the house? You can do whatever you want. If, if you didn't have the power, brother, you couldn't take it. So I'm going to stand on the word of God. Whatever come my way, I deal with it. Hallelujah. And after I've done all the stand, I'm going to stand some more. And I ain't going to lie. And I ain't going to be deceitful. And I ain't going to trick nobody. I'm just telling you, I'm going to do it God's way. I deal with it when I get across the bridge, when I get to it. Come and tell me I got to move, then I move. Hallelujah. I ain't pack. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, I've tried, I've tried, I, listen, I've tried it all. But when God wants something to happen, it's going to happen. I learned that. I done learned that. What did I tell you about knowledge, experience, faith? I've learned you can't stop something when God done put it in motion. So you might as well go with the flow. You might as well, you might as well ride the way. You ever been on a boat and you trying to do something and the water's so strong out the while you cut the engine and ride the way. Because you can't do nothing. The waves are too strong for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Stand therefore, having your learned girt about with truth. That's all I want there. Come on. Go back to 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. I want to I get all of this in. Because I got to get the last verse in. Come all the way over here. Just for one verse. Is it the last verse? Can't remember no more. No. My main verse is verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. But we're going to get them all. Come on. What verse we at? 13, 11, he said, for which live after all way delivered under death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. So then, work it in us. Do y'all know, I'm dying that y'all can live. It's time for y'all to die so somebody else can live. But see, the problem with y'all helping folks, y'all don't die. Why? Because y'all don't abound. Because y'all still, listen, y'all still fighting them little penny and dime sin. You ought to be over that stuff. You fighting junk. You fighting sin that you ought to left when you first got saved. Oh, hallelujah. You enjoying lusting. When you going to realize you ain't got no business lusting? Why God got to deal with you that for year after year after year? Hallelujah. Thank you, G. Listen, the thing that you hate the most ought to be the first thing you dump. For some reason, that's the last thing we dump. But you hate that the most. Hallelujah. Let me stick with my subject here. Come on. What verse we at now? He said, well, we having the same spirit of faith as according as it was written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we. I speak what I speak because I believe. I believe what I speak. So therefore I keep speaking it. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, growing up in the South, growing up in the South. A man was supposed to act like no woman. Growing up in the South, you could not be lazy and you could not have no characteristics of no woman. You just couldn't do it, lady. You just couldn't. You'd be the laughing stock of the other, of the, I can't call it a town because I didn't live in a town. I lived on a creek bank. Amen. But you couldn't do it. You just couldn't do it. It just did not work. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, we are put in a position where God is saying something y'all just can't do. Amen. Period. Amen. Now, if you do it, I'm going to make you seem like an outcast. You know what ask outcast feel like, Brother Beverly, don't you? You're walking in here. You walk, listen, walking in this church with a man with his hair all curled up. You can't walk in this church with your hair all curled up. Amen. You can't walk in the church with earrings in. Ain't no man in here sitting here with earrings that say. Amen. You can't do that in this church. Amen. I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. Amen. You may say it don't bother you. Yes, it does. I know it's going to bother you because the word of God says it's going to bother you. Now, whether you take it or not, that's your business. Amen. Listen, women can't walk in here with pants on comfortably. 
sitting in here scourging. Y'all wear them short dressings and you sit up here, you're scourging. Listen, why put yourself through that? You can go, go to another church, you can do it, you can sit there. Sit on, the women sit on the front row with short dressing with their legs all open. Can't come in here with that, you don't feel comfortable. God say, we talking about abounding. I'm going to put you in a situation where you can't come to this church doing any kind of thing. I see y'all when you pass out and go to sleep, you're scared. Think I'm going to call your name out. That's right. You ought to be uncomfortable because I might call your name out. You ain't going to come up in here and set up in here and sleep. You want to sleep, stay home. Go back home and get in the bed. Hallelujah. The objective is to make you uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So he said the thing that I speak, I'm going to keep on speaking them. Because I'm not preaching me. I'm not preaching you. I'm preaching Jesus Christ. I'm trying to get you to heaven. That's my main objective is to get you to heaven. Tell you all the time, I ain't trying to be your friend. I got a friend. I got a, I got a friend that you could never be. Named Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When I lay down at night, you can't help me in my thought. But Jesus can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all talking about you, my friend. Y'all can't even help me keep my house. But Jesus can. You understand? So I got a friend that y'all can never be. So I ain't seeking for friendship. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get to heaven. Come on. Next verse. He said, knowing this, knowing that he which raised up Jesus, the Lord shall raise up up us also by Jesus and shall present for all things that are your sake for all things are for your sake all things that I do and preach and say is for your sake every time I get up here raising my voice stomping my feet trying to preach and sweating like a cow I do it for your sake I'm trying to put something in you for your sake Amen. I'm trying to help you make it to heaven. I'm trying to show you living where you are today, you will not make it. You need to abound. You got to get high on the mountain. You got to get way up high in Christ. Being where you are today, you will not make it. You got to abound. Holly and I'm a Christian don't mean nothing. All and I'm a Christian mean I got a seat in hell. That's all that guarantees you. You got to say, I am a saint. Hallelujah. And then you got to live like one. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, with well, everything I do, I do it for your sake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all think I get up here and preach just for me to look good? I look good without preaching. I ain't got a sweat to look good. <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus come on what else he saying that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of god what the man is saying redound let me give you the meaning of redound for redound means standing on the edge to return see listen no matter what people say they won't to get close to God. They just don't know how. They don't know how. They try money, they try women, sex, drug, alcohol, fame, the whole, the list goes on and on and on. But in the end, they really all want to be close to God. Here's where the problem comes in. They don't have people that are willing to tell them how to get close to them. The only way I can tell you how to get close to God is for me to abound. Listen, if y'all abound, y'all can show folks how to get close to God. Sidebar. God keep telling me to tell y'all this. Here's one of the problems that y'all have. All y'all, I think, pretty much got this problem. When y'all go out to witness and try to get folks to come to church, don't try to teach them what I teach y'all. Don't, don't try that. They ain't going to learn it. You're going to run them away. Y'all have a vast knowledge about the word of God. All y'all got to do is tell them basic things. They need to be saved. They need the Holy Ghost. Tell them what happened to you. If they ask you why you don't wear pants, lady, don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. Say, you have to get my pastor to explain. Well, don't you know yet, but I would prefer he answer that. Because they're going to trip you up or you can't explain it like I can. Y'all understand? When, 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 when I tell y'all that if, 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 
if, if the marriage don't work, it's the man's fault. Listen, you, there's very few people that's going to agree to that because they don't understand the scripture. You can't tell them all of that. They don't under, y'all understand that y'all know how much knowledge y'all got in y'all head to make that make sense to you? You understand? Then I tell you what, take an ASIC test. The next time you tell it, try it out, men. Try it out. Women, y'all can do it too. The next time you tell a man a marriage don't work is your fault and they disagree with you, tell them that the Bible said, just give, just give them two scriptures. The Bible said, 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 do you know there's a scripture that said the man is the savior of the body? And if they say no, they don't know about that scripture, okay, that's one reason they don't understand what you said. And then tell them the other scripture that the Bible said that if a man don't treat his wife right, God said, I don't hear your prayer. Now, if they don't know those two scriptures, then ask them how in the world do they not understand or know that if they claim they know so much about God. And if they say they know the first one, which they said that, uh, 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 what did I just say? The savior of the body said, do you know you're referring to the man and the woman as the body? So do you know that? If they don't know that, then why would you going to try to explain something to somebody that don't even know scriptures exist? Do y'all understand my point? If they don't know scriptures exist, how in the world are they going to understand the scripture? You waste your time explaining stuff to folk that don't know the Bible. Just because they can quote a few scriptures. Listen, what they do, quote them, calm, them common scriptures that everybody like to quote. But they don't know how to go line up on line up on line. Precept upon precept upon here a little, there a little. Listen, they don't know how to put the scriptures together. Y'all stop running folks away trying to be a teacher and a pastor. Yeah, not your job. That's me and God's job. Y'all get them to come here to hear what I got to say. And I guarantee you they'll never walk out confused. They'll walk out scared, but not confused. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Read down again. On the edge of return. Listen, people are on the edge of returning. So I, you have to suffer to help them to get back. Amen. Listen, we were all with God at some point in time. And I'm talking about the fact that we were born out of his image. We were born because he thought of us. But listen, but we've all left God and went into sin. Listen, now everybody was on the verge of returning. They just got to get someone to show them it is worth returning. Now, you got that? You got to show them, lady, it's worth returning. Now, do you think because you stop cussing, do you think that's going to help them return? No, not good enough. Do you think because you stop sleeping around, that's going to help them return? No, not good enough. Plenty of sinners out there stop cussing. Plenty of sinners out there stop drinking. Plenty of sinners out there stop sleeping around. So you think you're doing good enough to help them return? They standing on the edge, but you ain't showed me nothing yet. Show me why I should come to Jesus Christ at the church of apostolicity. We believe in holiness. All the churches say that. Oh, hallelujah. Show me something that you are doing that the church across the street is not doing. Hallelujah. Show me that you got some practices and you got some commandments and teaching that's going to go beyond what I already know. I'm standing, I'm, I'm listen, I'm standing in, 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 at the verge of return. I'm standing uh, down, and you got to convince me why I got to come to your church. Standing on edge. But you ain't showing me nothing, nobody else. You telling me, you telling me that I got to be saved and live holy, and your dress just as short as mine. You telling me I got to live holy and, and, and do right? Listen, your appearance is look like, you look like me. You sagging, I'm sagging. You telling me I got to live holy and righteous where well, both of us sitting up in the club. You telling me we got to live righteous, you, you just got through cussing just like I did. It ain't good enough. Them little penny and sin that y'all dropping ain't good enough to get nobody off the edge and bring them to Jesus. You got to abound. If you don't abound... You ain't going to help nobody. 
because most folks can do what you are already doing. They just don't want to. Oh, hallelujah. But when you come over here, you find out you got to do things that you can't do by yourself. You going to find out that you got to love your enemies. Tell them I love my enemies. Hallelujah. They going to tell you I love my enemies too. But you can't explain. See, they got fleshly love for the enemy. You got spiritual love for your enemy. At least you're supposed to. But you can't tell them that. Or oh, if you ain't got it. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to try to. You're going to try to tell them, you're going to try to tell them that you know how to love and be nice and kind and everybody. But as soon as somebody bump your car, hey, why you bump my car? Wait a minute, I thought you were saved. You upset because somebody put a scratch on your car. Oh, hallelujah. You upset because somebody called you out of your name. Do y'all know there's a lot of folk can be called a nigga and it won't affect them? And they ain't got an ounce of Holy Ghost? Because they're intellectual. Well, they know you can call me what I want. Listen, words don't hurt me. But you saved and can't handle it. So what are you doing to convince them to get off the edge and step on into Jesus? They standing on edge. They want some help. They want to be saved. What are you doing to convince them to take the next step? What are you doing? Because you are perplexed. Because you are perplexed and don't know what to do, you don't know how to encourage nobody else. But then that maybe you ain't just perplexed, maybe you are in despair. Hallelujah. You mean to tell me because you're in a situation you can't be supportive and help nobody to get out of theirs? Because you are all cast down? You must think you're forsaken because you can't help them. Oh, hallelujah. Hope y'all follow me. You think, listen, you in a position to help somebody because you know how it feels to be there. Encourage them. Tell them God going to help. In the midst of encouraging them, you're going to encourage yourself. But instead, you chicken out and you make them chicken out. But you ain't, you know why you can't do it? Because you ain't abounding. You are stagnant and you ain't doing nothing. And you think because you done got the Holy Ghost, you think you're going to make it to heaven. Sad to say. What did I tell you? I think it was sometime this week or last week. If you don't know the reason to be a saint, you're going to be a poor saint. You got to know the reason you're a saint. If you don't know the reason, you're going to be a poor saint. Listen, a down meaning people are standing on the edge. That's what he's saying here. Look, read it again. He said, well, for all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Listen, everything that I do, I do it for your sake. So I can get the grace of God to reach them people that are standing on edge. They standing on edge and don't know where to go. But they just saying, somebody, please tell me what do I need to do. I do it. But you got to convince me that what you are doing is better than what they're doing across the street. You think you living, you think because you go to church on Sunday? Drive around. Millions of folks at church today. You think because you can come to church dressed up, looking nice? You mean that make you a saint? That make you, that make you living right? Everybody can dress up real good. I can wear a suit every, I can wear a suit every, every Sunday if I want to. Hallelujah. The suit I got on is 20 years old. You think, you think, how many suits you think I done bought in 20 years? I'm trying to show you. You, your outward appearance don't have much to do. Oh, hallelujah. It's your character. What kind of person are you? What kind of person? I've, clothes don't make you, y'all. Hair dudes, clothes, all of that stuff don't make you. Speaking correct grammar, y'all know how I butcher up English. I butcher it up everywhere I go. But ask me about the word of God. Ask me about the word of God. I bet you I can beat you there. And if I really took time, I could say a lot of words right. I ain't got time. Just like saying, I ain't got time. I know that wrong. But you know what I mean, don't you? It's a waste of my time. Got time to be trying to speak right just so you can understand. You understand what I'm saying? 
The Bible said, having food and raiment, there would be content, and folk act like they don't know what that means. So when I tell you having food and raiment, shut up. You forget about what the word said, not you worrying about how I said it. But you know what shut up mean, don't you? Content. Listen, and then I got to give you an example about how if you ate a good meal and you didn't want no more food, ain't you content? If you content, ain't your mouth closed, you ain't begging, give me another piece of pie, give me another piece of cornbread. You content, you done shut up. So when you going to learn to shut up? When you going to learn to be content having food and raiment? Shut up. What you complaining about? Listen, you perplex and you in doubt in your mind. You don't know what to do. Listen, if you perplex, shut up. Shut up. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Read down. People standing on edge wanting to be saved and y'all don't want to abound so they can read down. Y'all don't want to abound to help them get to heaven because you too busy worrying about your perplexity. You were, what's the other one? Worrying about your trouble, perplexity. Worrying about your persecution or being pursued. You worrying about three little old simple things and you can't help nobody else. When God then already told you, you may be perplexed, John, but that's okay. Listen, it ain't complete yet. You may be troubled, you may be on a journey and there's no way back. What you want to go back for? What you want to go back for? That's why Jesus said, if anybody look back, you ain't fit to be my disciple. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Y'all, we've come a long way. We've come a long way. Now, don't you think you've come a long way? Why would you want to consider going backwards? Brother Raymond, just about every time Brother Raymond talked to me, he said, Pastor, hey, this is the best I ever felt in all my life right this minute. Seems like every time he talked to me, it's the best he ever felt right this minute. In other words, I'm Pastor, I'm getting better and better. Listen, I ain't going back. Every day I wake up, I'm better. Why would I want to go back? Listen, when you can wake up every day and say, I know I'm better today than I was yesterday, and you say that every day, what, what would even make you want to go back there? I'm getting better every day. I got a whole different mindset every day. Why would I want to go back? I'm going to go back to misery. I was there too long. <laughs> misery got to be running, buddy. I didn't like that, buddy. I didn't like Crown Roar. We got to be too close. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Verse 16, he said, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Because I got people standing on edge... Listen, do y'all know sometimes I just don't feel like coming here to preach? Y'all know that? That's perplexed. It's like, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired and seem like they just don't want to listen. That's what frustrates me so much. Y'all not reading Hebrews like I told you. It's like, man, I give them a solution, they don't do it. Perplex. Perplex. He said, always bearing about the Lord in my body. I'm always suffering in my body to help y'all. You understand? Thank you, Jesus. And then I got to remember y'all standing on edge. Y'all can't wait to get to the church so y'all can hear something to encourage you that you ain't going to listen to. That's why the man said here, he said, for what? For which sake cause me to faint not. Because I'm perplexed. Because I really don't feel like doing it. But because you are redound and standing on edge, I ain't going to faint. I'm going to show up and preach, Cassini. Because I know you're standing on edge to get somewhere in Christ. So I'm going to show up and preach because of you. You understand? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live right because of you, Cologne, because I don't want to convince you or get you the idea you can do shafted thing to live right. So I'm going to put up with all my tests and trial for you. So everything I do for you is for your conscience sake, because I know who I serve. I'm convinced. Listen, y'all are the one that's not convinced. When Paul was writing that, he was letting the Corinthians know, including me, John, y'all, the one. I'm convinced already, but because for y'all's sake, I faint not. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all get tired of living right because y'all ain't worried about nobody but yourself. If y'all was to be considerate of others, how many of y'all, how many of y'all in the last 30 days done took a drink in front of somebody or somebody knew you had been drinking or somebody knew you'd been smoking or somebody knew you fornicated 
or somebody know you committed adultery, or somebody know you steal, stole rather. How many of y'all did some of these things and somebody know? How many, how many of y'all have done something illegal and somebody know you did it? You understand? See, you did all of that stuff and somebody know you did it. Listen, he said, for their conscience sake. He said, Paul said, for y'all conscience sake, I don't do things wrong. Listen, it's for y'all conscience sake. Y'all conscious, not mine. Y'all conscious. For y'all conscious sake, I don't do stuff wrong because I don't want y'all to know that your pastor is doing things wrong. So because of y'all, I keep working hard for y'all's sake. In other words, y'all standing on edge and I got to make sure that I help you on a cross in the right direction. But I'm perplexed. 